Hands up, lift your hands high if you know that you're free. You're free. Lift your life clean, cause you've been redeemed. redeemed. No compromise in the place in the king. On a shame, Romans 1 16. Let's go to the Word of God. Let's go to the book of Luke, chapter 18. We're going to be at verses 31 to, I believe, 43. It says, then Jesus took the 12 off to the side and said, listen carefully. We're on our way up to Jerusalem. Everything written in the prophets about the Son of Man will take place. Then verse 31 says, he will be handed over to the Romans, jeered at, made sport of, and spit on. Then after giving him the third decree, they will kill him. It says in three days, he will rise alive. But they didn't get it. Couldn't make either heads nor tails of what he, talking about Jesus, what he was talking about. Let's stop there for a second because I want to paint a picture real quick. Let me, let me give you a spiritual Picasso. Jesus is on his way to Calvary. He's on his way to Passover. He's on his way to complete and, and do the journey of, of going down uh, Golgotha and, and going to his death, burial, and resurrection. So he's on his way to his goal. He's on his way to what he was put on earth to do. Uh, remember, Jesus was God uh, in the flesh. He was, he was the only 200% person that's ever walked this earth. He was 100% God, but yet he was 100% Man, so so he's on his way, traveling. He's got his disciples with him, and, and and if you look in the book of Mark, this is the third time that Jesus has told his disciples about his journey and about his death, and they still didn't get it. They still could not understand. How are you going to tell me you're doing all this work? We see you open blind eyes. We see you open deaf ears. We see you raise the dead. We see you do all this stuff. How are you going to leave us? You're so young and, and all this stuff. You've only been doing this for three years. How are so you're, you this is going to happen? We, we thought you're the king that's going to take the throne and rule and put us in positions and titles and all this stuff. And we would govern these people. They still didn't understand Jesus' purpose. So, Jesus is on his way. Focus. Got to think about his focus. He's going to go to the place of getting beat, spit on, pumped out, just, just dogged out. Right? So, think of his focus. So, the Bible says that he's on his way. Jericho, he came to the outskirts of Jericho. It says, stop there, leave that scripture up. Because you need to understand the background so you can understand the full point of what we're, where we're going this morning. Jericho was kind of like a resort. Jericho actually means uh, a city of palms. Uh, it, it actually, it, it had palm trees and, and it was luscious. It, the heat because the climate was very tropical. So, 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 so Jericho was, was one of them fancy cities. You know, the ones we go to, you know, when we want to re relax and rest and, and whatever. Jesus is on his way to, to Jerusalem, but, he, but he, he's going to Jericho. And he's on his way to Passover. And, and all the people are always went to Passover every year because that's where they had a big set. That was mega fest back then. Okay? So you can kind of understand the parallel. So it says, as he's on the outskirts of Jericho, a blind man was sitting beside the road asking for handouts. A blind man. Now this is the story of blind Bartimaeus. It says, when he heard the rustle of the crowd, he asked, what is going on? They told him, said, Jesus, the Nazarene is going by. He said, yell, Jesus, son of David, mercy, have mercy on me. And it says, those ahead of Jesus told the man, shut up, shut up. But he only yelled all the louder. Son of David, mercy, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and ordered him to be brought over. When he had come near, Jesus asked the blind man, he said, what do you want from me? He said, master, I want to see again. Jesus said, go ahead, see again. Your faith has saved and healed you. Yes. And it says the healing 
Jesus was instant. He looked up, see, and then followed Jesus. Glorified God. Everyone in the street joined in. Everyone in the street. See, they were happy about his breakthrough. Everyone in the street joined in, shouting praise to God. Today's message, I just want to put this simple title on it so you can put it on Facebook and Instagram and in your memory. Going from blindness to blessing. Going from blindness to blessing. Now, we have to understand that this blind man, which is miraculous to me, it's funny how this blind man, not only was he blind, but he was a beggar. Isn't it funny how one affliction in your life can cause you to go into other afflictions? The Bible never said he couldn't walk. The Bible never said he couldn't talk. Tony, the Bible never said that he couldn't get a job or read braille. He could do something. But it's funny how one affliction can make you think you're fully afflicted when we don't realize that just because you're afflicted don't mean you're handicapped. Yes, so, this blind man, you know Passover's coming. So he goes on the side of the road. You know all these people are going to pass through. I can come up. All these people coming through, they going to church. I know they got money. Wow. I'm just standing on the side of the road where they got to pass to get to Jerusalem. So he's out there blind, ready to bed. He's like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to come up and get my knees met this way. He's on the side of the road. And the great thing about it, and this is the first time we're going to talk about the four B's on this one. We're going to talk about blindness. Let me get it. I want to make sure I get it right. Because I post some stuff the wrong way. We're going to have some problems. So this man recognized, first and foremost, that he was blind. So we're going to talk about blindness. We're going to talk about belief. We're going to talk about boldness. We're going to talk about blessing. See, until you're willing to admit you're blind, you'll never be able to have the belief in Jesus you need in order to come to the throne of grace with boldness to receive the blessing. See, we keep trying to get the blessing, but we skip one of the three of every. Yeah. We forget to remember and remind ourselves where we are and what our flaws are. We forget to talk about, yeah, we're blind. Just like this man was, was, was physically blind, Wes, we as Christians, we've got to recognize that we're spiritually blind. Uh, because we don't read God's word, because we don't dive in God's word, because the elements of this world gets us caught off of looking at shows that are per se positive and uplifting, we caught up in the haves and have nots, not realizing that we have and have not because we know not what to ask. Uh, we looking at the, the, the preachers of L.A., but we supporting our preacher in our city. Well, well. So, 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 and the list goes on and on and on. But, but my point is, this blind man, the first thing he did, Shane, was he recognized and admitted he was blind. How did he admit he was blind? He put himself in a blind position because if you read in the book of Mark, it says they had on old garments, and that was a sign. You know how people are on, on the side of the road? They, 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 you ain't going to get no money if you... Let me go out there on the side of the road with a cup and a sign talking about work for food like this. Come back in about three quarters. If that. But this, this man, he was, he was blind. And, and it reminds me, I don't know if y'all remember the Olympics that were in Atlanta years ago. And they were having these Olympics in, in Atlanta. This is probably a real long time ago. And the city, because of what the Olympics were going to be, they displaced all the homeless people, made all the homeless people move. Because they didn't want the television cameras in it. The people, the big high executives, they want people to see the slums and the, the lowness in their city. Not realizing that if people saw the lowness, they probably would have supported the help. So imagine this, this blind man who recognizes he's blind on the side of the road. He's going down the street, and all of a sudden, he hears a loud crowd. Louder than normal. He's like, I've, I've been here for years coming through. I ain't never heard a ruckus like this. What, what's going on here? Some, something, something just ain't right, as Keith Sweat was saying. And he said, I don't understand. He yells out, what's going on? Right? And the scripture tells us, the people turn around and say, Jesus is coming through time. So the Bible says immediately, this man obviously must have known who Jesus was. Maybe he had heard about him before. Because the man not only recognized his blindness, which was step one, he proves his belief. Because he says this, he says, 
Jesus, son of David. He didn't say Jesus, son of, you know, Naz the Nazarene, because normally you would call a person by the region where they came from, so you would know where they were raised. Like you would be uh, Ashley Abandon, you know, or Beaumont, whatever it is, Courtenay of uh, Moreno Valley, or oh, being you're on the other side now, uh, Courtenay of Rancho Bilaco. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So, so, so he, he calls to him son of David to let him know, I know who you are. And not only do I know who you are, I know what you're capable of. Yeah. My question was this morning, who are we calling on? Wow. Do we really know what Jesus is capable of? Mm. <laughs> so this man recognizes his blindness. He, he then proves his belief because he yells out, the Bible says, to Jesus and says, Jesus, uh, son of David. And all of a sudden, isn't it funny that when you call on God and you really call on God in your situation, how you got all the naysayers telling you to shut up? It don't take all of that. Sit down, sit down. Praise and worship is over. Sit down. You still pray. Sit down. Come on. So this man... Because I'm putting a little, a, a few uh, uh, brush marks on the Picasso that I think was there. I, I can see the picture, y'all. Y'all know I, I see pictures. And I can see these, these leaders, these distinguished people, trying to lead Jesus into town. And they kind of like the people, the officials were in Atlanta. Like, guys, we should have got this homeless guy up out of here. You know, we don't want Jesus to see what we got going on here. We want, this is the tropical city. This is the resort. been pretty confident because remember belief means confidence. Yeah. Faith means confidence. Yeah. <laughs> the Bible says uh, being confident in this very thing. Yeah, that's right. He was doing a good work in you shall perform. But but being confident, yeah. confident means being with faith. It yeah. means being with. So 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 anyway, so this man not only is he really blind, he now proves his belief. Made his confession. So he, he, he made his confession, right? And, and now he, he shares what's going on with him. And they're telling him to shut up. The Bible says he yells loud. See, when the church going to get to the point where they tell you to sit down, be like, you know what? You, you want me to sit, sit down? Oh, because I'm standing up and you still sit down? Well, try this off the side. Now I'm standing up here. What you going to do? When, when are we going to get the boldness to say, stop telling me when to cut off my praise? Stop telling me when to cut off my words. You don't know what I've been. Some of y'all ain't gonna like this, but I'm just gonna tell it because I feel like telling it. It's this song by R. Kelly. <laughs> Called Shut Up, Shut Up, I'm talking to you, Shut Up, I love it. I play it all the time. It's telling you a story about how they talked about it. Drug his name down. He in the house with this. He said, Before I could even come awake, the people are already talking about me not going to make it. You'll never do it again. And he said, I, he said, it hurts me so much that some of y'all don't even want me to come back up. He said, but God, been too, he said, after 22 years in a blessed career, y'all still hating on me. And I'm still trying to give God. If the church would accept me and bring me in and allow me to be converted, then maybe I could help. So, he said, shut up. The man yelled louder. No, I ain't shutting up. I'm gonna keep talking. I'm gonna keep Jesus. Sometimes you gotta keep calling Jesus' name until he asks. Because the Bible says, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. See, sometimes you don't need to be talking about telling God what you want. You just gotta call his name. You know what you want. Because here's the trick I think. The man kept yelling. People tell him to shut up. He yelled louder and louder. Sharice, he just kept yelling. Finally, the Bible says, Jesus stopped. Have you ever called on Jesus long enough to where it makes Jesus stop working on behalf of somebody else and actually pays attention to you? <laughs> but because he don't respond at your first request, we stop. All right, all right. So, because I personally, Jesus heard him the first time. Yeah, yeah. But he wanted to see 
his boldness. Because this man is distinguished boldness. Yeah, I know I'm blind. One of y'all can walk up on me, knock me out, because I can't see you coming. <laughs> but I'm going to be bold anyway. I don't care. I'm blind. I'm struggling. I'm going through this on the side of this road, trying to make ends meet, because this is all I know. Because the church has been coming by here for years, but ain't nobody came to lift me up and help me out. Ain't nobody took this up. I'm going to take you to Jerusalem to get your healing. They just let me stay at Jericho. And you're going to tell me to be quiet? No. I'm being bold about my. What do I got to lose? All right. All right. What do you got to lose? Ain't nothing else worked. Have you tried Jesus? So, so the man is blind. He proves his belief in Jesus. He now shows his boldness. Because the scripture says you can come boldly to the throne of grace and receive mercy. So he, he's bold with it. And then after he does that, Jesus tells him, la la, he said, Jesus says, Stop. She said, no, no. Bring this man to me. Because you 12 disciples walking around here, the man ain't did nothing. You so busy calling him and being escorted through the city with your titles and positions. You try to make you, you heard him, because if I heard him and I'm in front of y'all and he back there, I know y'all heard him. <laughs> oh, this is good. I love this. Anyway, so 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 now, check this out. Jesus stops. To bring it to me. The man comes to Jesus. And this was funny to me. Jesus asked the man, Kitchen, what do you want? Now, as you see the man can't see, you done had to summon somebody to go get him. I, I mean, to me, if somebody come, come walking up to me and say, Pastor, I want, the, I want you to heal me, they should not have to tell me if they're coming down the aisle, lifting up and see, no, something wrong with the hip. So I'm like, Jesus, why would you? I you see the man blind. I don't know if they had sunglasses back then. Maybe they had tinted fig leaves on it. I don't know what they had. But there was some sign that you could tell the man was blind. And so, so the man comes up to Jesus. Jesus says, what do you want? The man says, I want to see. The truth out there, the reason why Jesus asked him, what do you want? Because Jesus wants to know, do you believe what you want? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, now, now I, 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 I'm going to step on a couple of toes because I need you to understand it. Some of us asking for husbands and wives, but you, do you know what comes with it? Uh, 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 you, you know, you get married uh, to, to get your husband, uh, he may require some different things. Uh, uh, you may now have to cook because he likes home cooked meal. And the Bible says, submit unto your husband as unto the Lord. Uh, so that means if you want to receive from God, how God is going to bless you, you got to follow your husband. I want a family now. But, but are you willing to go and meet the needs for the family? Uh, it, it may require uh, getting two jobs, three jobs, four jobs. But the first thing you need to do is try a job. I uh, got the church in the uproar. Males against the females. <laughs> Talking about I got, I, I, I'm looking for a job. Try a job. Try Asia. That's, that's a good job. Try. No, that, that ain't my skill set. Well, obviously, the set you got ain't set you up. Oh, I'm preaching better than y'all said. Amen. So, let's get back to this message as I bring this premise to a logical conclusion. So, this blind man, blind Bartimaeus, he's blind, he admits his blindness, he recognizes he's blind, he, he's showing that the, the, the features of being blind, and, 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 and then he, he proves his belief by calling out to Jesus, son of David, he recognizes Jesus' authority, he recognizes Jesus' power, and then he all of a sudden comes and says, I'm going to come with boldness, I'm not just going to take no for an answer, I'm not going to take no the first time, I'm going to keep saying, when are we going to get the mind like our kids got? Our kids just keep asking over and over and over and over and over. When are we going to get that same, if we're a child of God, when are we going to start? 
Well, I just asked him last week, and I asked him this week. Well, maybe last week you were dealing with somebody else's problem that was worse than yours. Just me. So, so, the man was blind, the man proved his belief, the man had boldness. And then, after that, guess what happened? He received the blessing. Yeah. Jesus says, your faith has healed you. <laughs> your faith. He said, your faith. Yeah. It didn't say mine. It didn't say having faith in what Paul said in, 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 in the Bible. It didn't say, you know, about David, little warrior, David in the life. Oh, I, I David in the life. Oh, I, I, got a, I, got, I got a Job experience. They ain't talking about Job. They ain't talking about that. They're talking about you. Yeah, yeah. Me, me, oh, So, Jesus said, the Bible don't say Jesus laid hands. That's right. The Bible don't say he turned around and said, hey, can you go uh, back to the other city? I left the anointed oil over there. Bible didn't say that at this particular point, Bible didn't say Jesus spin his eye like he did for somebody else. The Bible don't say nothing about Jesus told the disciples, get behind him because I'm gonna slam in the spirit. But it don't say nothing. Yeah. Except the man admitted yeah. what he was, what his issue was. He showed him belief, he, he did it with boldness, and Jesus said, You've received the blessing. See, our problem is we keep skipping where we at and keep trying to get the blessing. We keep forgetting and showing our belief and trying to get the blessing. We don't So, after that, the thing I love about this story is what I love about life is, as a Christian, the Bible says my blessing, Didi, should be a blessing to others. Yeah. Yeah. So the Bible says yeah. this man, after he immediately, quick, quick. See, now, let me, let me paraphrase this and give some understanding here. Some of y'all ain't going to receive your blessing, Shane, instantly. Don't take that one story and think, oh, that's me. I'm blind Bartimaeus. No, you're not. Because you don't know what blind Bartimaeus had to do to get to where he was at. So you want to go through what blind Bartimaeus went through to get to where he was at to see what he got. You may be looking at my glory, but don't know my story. You want my blessings. Don't know what it took to get me here. And you may just handle what I went through. So, I said, Man got blessed. People around him got excited. So the man jumped up instantly. It was healed instantly. Some of y'all may take a while. See, we went to conferences, like I said, they told us to blab and grab it, season and season, name it and claim it, all that stuff. And that's the only part of the message you heard. But you didn't hear nothing about the message that said, get yourself together. Amen. Drop all your weights. All right. <laughs> Come out of your shack. I didn't say shackles, I said shacking. Amen. I didn't, shacking ain't a sin. But what happens in the temptation of shacking will lead to sin. No man can take fire in this bosom without getting burnt. That's the word. Let's get it right. So, the Bible says the man leaped up, jumped up to him. The Bible says, immediately as he jumped up, he saw. He didn't get caught up. See, here's the problem. This is something I just caught this. Thank you, Jesus. The man jumps up, the Bible says, and follows Jesus. Now, this man had been blind. <laughs> Never once did he get caught up and say, I want to see what I look like now. Yeah. I, man, look at those beautiful trees. Man, look at this. Oh, this is, oh, look at her. Ooh, wee, wee. Now, he didn't say none of that. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says, he immediately jumped up instantly and decided to follow Jesus. The people got excited because the people realized that his motive wasn't even for himself. The motive was for him to get healed, to be able to follow Jesus, yeah. to lead up. the people got up in and got to shouting with them. They got to shouting and praising God. The whole parade was stopped because one person decided to step out with boldness and say, and receive the blessing God had for them and say, I'm not keeping it for myself. And jumped up praising God, following Jesus, and everybody will follow behind. My point to y'all this morning is this. If you want to go from blindness to blessing, you got to have the right motive in your heart why you want the blessing of God. You can't say I want the blessing of God because I want to bless others if that's not what's in your heart. You may be able to fool me. You may be able to fool Tom, Dick, and Harry, but you can't fool Jesus because the Bible says he knows our heart. So some of us aren't blessed because God knows our heart. 
And I've got to stop praying for people. I had, I had this one time, this, this guy came to me and he said, you know, pastor, he said, um, and I heard this story before, but I want to share it. He said, um, he's a pastor, he said, I haven't had a hard time giving lately. You know, just, you know, I come to church, I keep forgetting. I know you're telling me to seek God first, what to give. And, you know, the Bible says, you know, that every man give. I got his purpose in this heart for tree. You know, da, da. and he's telling me this story. And I'm just sitting there, you know, cool, that's going to be chilling, just looking at him. And I said, but didn't you get blessed at your job? Did you get promoted? He said, oh, yeah, I, I, I got promoted twice. I mean, my income went from this number, I mean, to here. You know, my family finally went to get a new house. God met our needs. I got, my wife was able to get out of that bucket she was in. I was able to get her something affordable. I, I mean, God is really blessed. But, but it, it's a trip. And I said, really? And he said, when I, when I was at, you know, that, 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 that 1500 a month, man, I mean, I was, I was consistent with my giving. I, I never missed it, and it was struggling. And I said, well, was God meeting the needs at the 50th? He said, yeah, he said, yeah. He said, it was hard, but God was meeting the needs. And he said, but I prayed, and, and I know you prayed for me, and God just increased. So my income went from 1500 to $5,000 a month. And he said, but I'm having a hard time giving. He said, and Pastor, I just want you to pray with me that my heart will get right to be able to give to God and give to the church. And I said, brother, I said, you ask me anything to let me pray. I said, grab my hand. He said, you want to agree with it? The two churches agree on that on earth. It's established in He said, yes, Pastor. I said, you believe that I'm a man of God and that I want the best for you because that's what God wants. He said, absolutely. For sure. He grabbed his hand and I said, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Your son here, the Lord, said he has a problem paying off of the 5000 to help bless the church. And you blessed him so abundantly. I ask you, Lord, that you would move him back down to 1500 a month, God, that he'll be able to give to the ministry like he was. Because he didn't have a problem giving it was there. But his motive for the promotion got twisted, and he forgot about God. So I wanted God to take it back to where he could remember God. You were... Is that what God has to do to us for us to recognize the blessing that he wants to give us? Is to be able to bless others and to bless his works. And his ministry. So we got to get our minds right, get our motives right. To be able to go from blindness to the blessing. You got to make sure. Recognize who you are. That you are blind. You got to make sure you believe in Jesus Christ. No other name. No other name. You can't believe in Buddha. You can't believe... And, and Mani Krishna, whatever it is, Holy Krishna, whoever Krishna, he ain't a Christian. You can rub on Buddha's belly, ain't nothing coming out. You talking to Confucius, Confucius ain't nothing but confused. Uh, Muhammad, the only Muhammad that was worth anything was Muhammad Ali. The only thing that's ever going to get you somewhere in life as a Christian is calling on the name of Jesus with boldness. Once you do that, and not take no for answer, you will receive the blessing. Amen. Put your hands together.